Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Scotty Shaw, and it's day eight of 40 Days of K. And um, today's word is commitment. Uh, it's pretty interesting that uh, Coach K starts off talking about the two most important vows, commitments he ever made. Um, first thing he said is, aside from the vows I took with my wife, Mickey, 37 years ago, uh, in 2006, so, you know, right now it's, uh, well, 50 years, I think. Yeah, he graduated 69. Well, happy 50 years, Coach K and Mrs. K. Um, so anyway, it starts off, aside from the vows I took with my wife, Mickey, 37 years ago, the most life-altering commitment of my life came from my first athletic director at Duke, Tom Butters. And... Um, it's an interesting fact, Coach K, um, he had his graduation in the morning from West Point and, uh, got married to Mrs. K, uh, that, I guess, afternoon. So, yeah, did that, then served in Korea, assistant coach at Indiana for 1974-75 with, uh, Bobby Knight. Then a few years of Army, or West Point, coach at West Point, then Duke. So, um, so yeah, West Point started 1975 through, I guess, spring 80, and then Duke started in fall 1980. So, um, anyways, the first, his first athletic director at Duke, Tom Butters, um, Pretty interesting. The story I heard about this uh, when I was starting to, I think it was this fall 2004, summer 2004. So I was starting to really pay attention to you know what was going on at every school, and especially uh, realizing, oh man, I might be coming to Duke right after Coach Kate leaves, because in 2004, the LA Lakers sent. Uh, reps to Coach K's uh, living room to talk about, you know, possibly signing a $40 million contract, Coach the Lakers and all that. And um, this was shortly after the Shaq and Kobe era. So, you know, it would have been a big deal, Coach K, you know, teaming up with Kobe Bryant because Kobe has often said he would have played at Duke if he had gone to college, although we all know he was not going to go to college anyways. You know, Kobe's Kobe. But, um, yeah, at the time, you know, following the news and then um, the first time I read this book is when I when I got a little bit more of uh, um, I think this is when I first got the, the the insight. I don't know if I had heard much of the story until of men just you know there's interest and then he turned it down. But um, he called uh, he called Tom Butters talked about it and um, you know Tom just talked about you know. Uh, follow your instincts. Follow, yeah, always follow your instincts for Coach K. And um, this is a big deal for Coach K. Uh, after his first three seasons at Duke, he had a 38 and 47 record. And uh, I can't remember if it's in this book later on, but there is a story where um, Coach K goes, is called into Tom's office, you know, boosters and everyone. Uh, we're calling for Coach K to get fired and stuff. So he comes in thinking, great, this is probably it. You know, going to get fired. Um, sits down in front of Tom. Tom slides a piece of paper over and says, Now, I think the biggest problem I have with you is you have no idea how good you're supposed to be, how good you really are. And it was a new contract extending Coach K. And, you know, Coach K has often said, you know, tears streaming down his face because. Uh, as he says here, I never doubted his support. And because he was committed to me and never doubted me, I never doubted me. His commitment made me better because I was never afraid of losing my job. It is easy to be committed to someone or something during good times. Because when you are winning, your commitment is never challenged. But loyalty and dedication during more difficult times can be rough. Tom never wavered. And when commitment doesn't waver, that's when you have the greatest chance of winning. And we did win. 
And as we know, you know, that's when, um, you know, so Coach K starts 1980, three years later, that's 1983. That's when the class of 86 came in, you know, the, the class that saved Coach K. And, you know, that's exactly what happened. Um, you know, Tom Arters always said, follow your instincts. If you're losing, okay, don't care, not going to interfere. He only asked me that I, that I ensure our student athletes were a good representation of Duke, both on and off the court. So, that's what happened. Um, you know, this one's a pretty short essay, but, um, you know, Tom basically said, you know, after interviewing Coach K, just couldn't get him out of my mind. Try to convince myself he's the wrong one. You know, definitely not the right one. But, you know, for him, it's like, gotta follow my heart. And, you know, committed to Coach K. Coach K committed to him. And, to, you know, that was it. You know, it was just always a strong commitment to each other. And so when Coach K called him in 2004 after meeting with the Lakers, you know, asked for advice, you know, he was told the same thing. Yeah, just follow your instincts, man. So uh, by then, Tom had retired. I believe, because I think the AD by then was Kevin White. But uh, yeah, the main thing was um, Coach K says the decision became easy because of Tom's commitment to me. I developed a commitment to Duke that I knew I could never give up. And. For me, that was an amazing thing. I didn't know the details. It's just, you know, I felt like Coach K is probably not going to leave. I mean, we already knew about other coaches going to the NBA, the struggles they had. And with Coach K, you know, he's Coach K, you know, for a reason. You know, he doesn't just move up the ladder or jump into the NBA because he can. You know, he sits down and decides, you know, what's best for him, his family, this and that. He goes through a million things, you know, deciding stuff. And, you know, I just felt like, you know, in the end, you know, Coach K is going to stay, and he did. So, you know, I was happy about that. You know, big reason why I went to Duke. But um, I think one of the big things is uh, knowing that he was going to be back, you know, really made it that much more exciting for me because then it's not just I'm going to school with J.J. Redick. It's also Coach K is going to be there. And um, my thing is um, – when Duke accepted me, you know, it felt like Duke was committing to me. I just had to commit back, and I did. Um, you know, just everything I talked about in the past few videos, um, you know, Duke, I, you know, basically had sent the message, do your best and we'll be proud of you. You know, we're not here to brag about the school. We're here to brag about your efforts. And over time, you're going to become a champion. You know, because we know you have a winner's mindset. That's why we're accepting you. Not just me, but everyone. You know, that's what Duke does. They accept people who have a winning mindset and are willing to do our best. Not afraid to make mistakes. Just keep getting better. And over time, you will eventually, you know, we will eventually become champions. You know, school of champions. So, um, I think that was a big thing for me. Realizing that's the commitment to me, you know, from Duke to me. And... You know, what's my commitment for me to Duke? And uh, I started off just, you know, contributing in small ways, you know, keeping things lighthearted for classmates when they're stressed, pranks, stuff like that, um, getting to know people, and eventually, you know, trying to, uh, you know, help advise them through rough times in life or something. And uh, eventually, you know, doing stuff like basketball marathon and giving back to Duke, the community, Emily K Center. And then, uh, you know, a few years later, being back in Durham, doing Hack Duke and stuff like that. And even now, you know, it's always looking out for all the Duke alums whenever possible. You know, anyone that's in the in the Blue Devils family, you know, it's part of my family. So do what I can. And I think that's the big thing. Commitment. You know, I know sometimes people talk about the sunk cost fallacy. But I think there's a difference between commitment and sunk cost fallacy. Commitment isn't talking about just blindly committing to the brand name or, you know, this person. You know, I think the commitment Coach K talks about is much deeper than that because 
here's the thing. He says of Tom Butters, he only asked me that I ensure our student athletes were a good representation of Duke both on and off the court. So it's not committing to just Duke, but also the relationships, the individual relationships, the care, belief, uh, you know, loyalty and dedication during more difficult times. You know, the values of your environment, you know, in this case for Coach K Duke. And I think that's the that's one of the big things. Commitment isn't just committing to, you know, the name Duke. You know, if we change the school name to School Lee McSchool Face right now, you know, we're still going to be the same alumni network. We're still going to view the students the same way. We're still going to, you know, do our best to get more students to buy into the values of Duke. And um, the biggest thing, I think, is it's not about the name. You know, it's about the values. And that's why Coach K stayed. And, you know, for me, that's why I went to Duke. That's why I fell in love with Duke, still do. And the thing is, people think commitment means to the name Duke. And that's not it. It's to the family. You know, I think where you get to the sunk cost fallacy, that's where it's um, ride or die, Duke forever, for everything. But that becomes misguided because true commitment and loyalty, dedication, and love for Duke. That means if Duke's doing something wrong, we call them out. You know, we are all part of the, this family. And it's interesting because um, last September or October, it was shortly before my birthday, I believe, but um, someone called, oh, I forgot his name exactly, Christian Shear. not sure how to say it, S- C-H-E-E-R, I think. He wrote an article saying um, Duke breeds devils. And he talked about a lot of the dark things that has happened. Uh, I think he was talking about on Duke campus. I can't remember if he mentioned off campus. And, you know, he was writing point that stuff out. You know, we're not perfect. The point of it isn't to say we're perfect, but we're committing to the values of Duke. You know, our, our school model is... Uh, might be saying this wrong because of Latin, but uh, eruditio et religio, which means, well, literally erudition and religion, but, you know, education and religion, um, Methodist roots and stuff, where now um, I would say for us, we mostly interpret it more as, you know, commit to your studies, commit to your, you know, you as a person. Um, so... You know, it's a big deal for an article like that to come out and say, yeah, you know, here's a large, here's a large amount of dark things that happen at Duke. And I wrote an article in response. I wouldn't call it a rebuttal because um, I didn't want to disagree. I wanted to say, hey, you're right. But I want to applaud you for calling that stuff out. And for anyone who feels bleak about what Duke is from your point of view, I want you to remember that we are also blue devils. Yeah, we have people from the community who, you know, they they do become questionable in some ways. You know, we all make mistakes to varying degrees. Um, some, you know, go way beyond, you know, just crossing a line or two. But then um, at the same time, as my article is called, Duke breeds blue devils. And the, the thing is, Duke breeds devils, and that's what Christian's calling out and Duke breeds blue devils, I'm saying, yeah, keep calling out these things. You see something wrong, call it out. Because for us, it's not that we're committed to the name Duke. We're committed to the values of Duke. And that's commitment. That's where our care, belief, loyalty, collective responsibility, you know, adaptability, all of these, you know, buzzwords, keywords, phrases, whatever you want to call them. The point of it isn't you have all these key words. I mean, yeah, it's 40 key words for success, but it's more than just for success. And it's more than just key words. That's a tagline of a book title. But I guarantee you, you talk to Coach K, he'll say, beyond basketball, Coach K's keywords for success, that's just a title and a tagline. It's not about just the name. You can even take his picture off of this. The main point of this is the, you know, it's the experiences you know, the commitment, you know, a book is not about the 
words on the page, but you know the the um, you know the lessons. In fact, in the introduction, Coach K says this book is not about merely using or borrowing words; it is about owning them, and that's the thing. You take away this cover. As much as I love this cover, I love Coach K's signature. Honestly, if you take if you burn this book right now, my greatest loss would not be that you know I lost the signature or the cover or the book itself, but that I I would be down to one copy, which I still have, but I'd be down to one copy of the knowledge. And if I lose that book as well, and then I gotta go buy another one, and I'm not buying the material. I mean, there's a cost for the material, but what I'm looking for is the knowledge, you know, the experience, the wisdom, you know, being able to refresh and rededicate owning it. I think that's the thing. A commitment to Duke was never about saying Duke is perfect. We will defend it to the death. It's about saying, Duke, if there's something we can do better, let's do better. If there's something that we're already doing good, let's do it better. Or let's keep doing it, but also try to do it better. You know, we win and we lose together. And, you know, you can easily extend this stuff like uh, blind loyalty to a country, nationalism. You know, if the government is bad, you call it out. You know, it's, you know, it's just made up of other people. You know, they might be smarter, they might be richer, more powerful, but in the end, they're still a person. They're not perfect. And it's dangerous to ever think a person is perfect or a school is perfect or anything is perfect. Because we all know the pursuit of perfection is more important than perfection itself. You know, practice doesn't make perfect. It's perfect practice makes perfect. But the key isn't to be that one player that scores every shot, you know, makes every shot, no turnovers, no fouls, makes the perfect play. There is no perfect play in basketball. It's too fluid. You know, life is the same way. There's no perfection. It's the pursuit of excellence, pursuit of perfection, but you accept progress over perfection, you know, then all, you know, when the game ends, be professional about it, shake hands, good game, stuff like that. But in the end, the biggest thing is commitment calls for you to be better for yourself, for your team, and not to get caught in, in that sunk cost fallacy of, oh, this is perfect. Of course, there are situations, you know, we understand in life where, you know, let's say if I publicly call out Mrs. K or Coach K's mom for an imperfection, yeah, he's totally right to, you know, to to defend them against me in public. Who am I to say anything to his wife or his mom? Now, what they do back home, I don't know. Maybe they don't care. Maybe they talk about this. But the fact is, his commitment to his wife and the values they share supersedes what I can say about them. And he's not engaging in a sunk cost fallacy by defending them against me if I ever say anything. He's committing to their relationship. The sunk cost fallacy is, you know, it's, that's a different situation. You know, it depends on how you view the situation. And for him, it's never a sunk cost fallacy. Now, if it's committing to Duke after Duke commits multiple infractions, you know, then, yeah, that's a very different situation. But the Duke, as he knows it, the Duke that he's helped build and the Duke that's helped build him, that's the Duke he's committed to. The values, the community, you know, the the alumni association, the future, and you know that's what you know I committed to. That's what we committed to as accepted acceptees uh, for the class of 09, you know, class of 2010, 11, I just you know into the future, mm -hmm. and all the alums I met graduated in the 60s, 70s, 80s, um, 90s. And in the end, it's it's a it's a set of values. You know, it's not just the brand name and the brand. It's it's the whole community that we commit to. So, you know, although Coach K talks about two individuals, um, you know, definitely be careful of monocausality. There's never just one reason. Even um, 
implicit or explicit. You know, there's always a mix of everything. It's just that Mickey, his wife, represents his commitment in terms of a marriage, and and obviously more than that. But you know, as in context, you know, um, talking about vows he took with her, and then Tom Butters, he's the AD, but there's also the values of Duke. So, you know, not to say that the Lakers didn't have good values. You know, it's just sometimes it's not the best fit. Sometimes it's not the right timing. Um, sometimes there's the fact that you need some higher ed activation energy to overcome the inertia of we're already here. We have to rebuild a new network. We have to have a new system. When you're at Duke, you can focus on perfecting it as much as possible. And... Um, I think in the end, I think Coach K probably kept coming back to saying, you know, about Tom Butters. He only asked me that I ensure our student, I, yeah, I ensure our student athletes were a good representation of Duke both on and off the court. I think that is very clear. For, or for Coach K, it was about committing to values. That's the biggest thing. You commit to values. That's what that's what this whole book is about. His fist analogy. Um, so everything he talks about, everything I heard, saw, experienced at Duke, after Duke, you know, it was always very much about values. And that's why I'm very much convinced, 100%, a billion per, uh, percent convinced that I didn't get into Duke because of my grades. I got in because I had good grades, also did a lot of sports, did a lot of community service, and created a basketball league that got inner city kids off the streets for a summer. I would say that's why I got into Duke. You know, it's multiple reasons, but in the end, it's because I showed in my life in a place where there's nothing happening, nothing was going to happen. I stuck to my own values and made something happen that fit with the values of Duke. So before Duke was ready to commit to me, I had already committed to the same values that Duke had committed to. And by the time it was time to apply, it was very much, you know, just a match made in heaven. I had the same values. Duke had the same values. And um, it was just, here's your acceptance. All right, Duke, here's my commitment. So I think that's a big thing, you know, just for everyone to remember going forward. Commitment does not mean you're stuck in the sunk cost fallacy. There's way more than just, you know, what meets the eye. There's a lot of implicit stuff going on. And even for Coach K, you know, started at Duke with $40,000 as a salary. Lakers offered him $40 million. That's a thousand times better. Well, just numerically, not accounting for inflation, but in the end, it was about the commitment to the values. And that's why Coach K stayed at Duke. So I think that's a big thing. Um, one of the real, it's a really short essay. Um, it's only really two full pages plus a bit, but commitment, I think is such a, an amazing thing. Um, you know, loyalty, care, belief, all that stuff. And it's true. Loyalty and dedication during more difficult times can be tough. And I think that's why Coach K stayed because in the end that, you know, the values that were shown to him repeatedly. Um, you know, he felt that he could stay and show those values back. So, yeah, that's commitment. Day 8 of 40 Days of K. And uh, the next word is communication.